Hallo. Hello, darling. He doesn't want to show his face on camera because I put purple spray all over it yesterday. <laughs> Balu. Hello, baby. He's not that purple now. You don't have to be embarrassed. Balu. Hello, darling. We've got, oh, that looks so much better now. Don't nip, you cheeky beast. Yeah, so hi guys. Um, <laughs> slightly random intro to a video there. Um, welcome back. So, blue. Oh my goodness, blue. Um, I actually have some footage for you from yesterday. I actually took him out for his first ever barefoot hack. Uh, we only went to the end of the road and back because we're still in the process of getting getting him used to riding out on the roads, um, hardening his feet off and everything like that uh, because obviously he's always had shoes on. He's never ridden out on concrete and bare feet before so there is going to be a certain length of time that we have to kind of acclimatise him to it um, and get his feet used to it. So yesterday was a big day. He went out for his first ever barefoot hack. Now he has obviously been riding in the field since uh, his shoes came off, since he removed two of them himself, I should say. Um, if you haven't seen that video, you should go and watch it. Um, he demolished his front feet like completely. He ripped both shoes off in the space of about 10, 15 seconds, bolting up the field one day and took a huge chunk of hoof off with them. Um, so it's been a, several months, several farrier trims to get his feet back to a fairly decent condition. Um, as I said, I've been riding him in the field a fair bit over the summer, but now uh, it's just wet here. Like, hey beasties. Like, they are now in our turnout yard for the winter. Hey Nelly which isn't too bad um it is graveled and it's it did have some sand stuff on it but it kind of turned to silt and mush so most of that has been scraped off over the years now because it was just kind of gross uh but yeah they are in their winter routine now pretty much we have allegedly got another heat wave coming next week we're supposed to be up to like 17 18 degrees for the week again i don't know if that's going to be enough to dry the ground out for them to go out at this point really um just because once our ground gets wet it just it's a write-off really um you need several weeks to a month to properly dry it out enough for them to go on it once it gets like that and we have reached the point of saturation uh the last week they've been in they've been in for about a week now i'd say um yeah so Horses are in, that means no more riding in the field, which means his, he doesn't want to pay attention to me today, his only option now for any ridden work over the winter is if we can get him hacking out a couple of days a week. And that's all I really want from him, really. A couple of days a week I would be more than happy with, just to keep him ticking over, um, to keep some muscle on him, keep him kind of fit. I don't know how far we will ever be able to take him barefoot. Uh, it really does depend on how his feet hold up. And that is a whole story to tell yet again because obviously you know anybody who's been following us for a while you'll know that we've had loads of problems with blue's feet in the past i've kind of talked about it in a few different videos um he would never hold shoes his feet would always peel and crumble and they were just awful um and that is one of the reasons why we decided not to put the shoes back on him after his most recent incident and oh are you coming over now and yeah um recently we kind of because obviously when you have a shoe on a horse's foot you can't see like the white line in the hoof wall or anything like that because the shoe covers it obviously now he's got his shoes off we were noticing that the white line was almost like hollowing out and rotting away within within his foot like that whole area was just hollowing and I think that's why his hoof wall was peeling and crumbling because the part underneath it was hollowing out and dirt and bacteria was getting in it and it was ending up I don't want to use the word infected uh, but 
I mean, there was bacteria in it doing things that it didn't like, and I think that was contributing massively to the t deterioration of his feet. Um, also, it's come to our attention now that we can see things a lot better without the shoes on, that I think he's had a pretty horrendous fungus issue going on in there. Now, he is a notoriously fungusy horse. Um, he gets all sorts of fungal problems, bless him. He is just very, very unlucky with things like this. Um, which is why the neem oil has been fantastic on him this year because it is antifungal and it's also really good for their skin and hair health anyway. Um, but yeah, so long story short, because I am absolutely, oh, I got something in my eye. I'm absolutely like waffling and rambling on here. Um, I will put that footage in of his little hack in a minute for you. Uh, but yeah, long story short, we have changed his hoof care routine again. And this time, touch wood, fingers crossed, I think we may have actually got to the source of the problem and the things that we're using on his feet now seem to be making really fast really good progress um i don't know if i'm going to be able to show you it keeps raining out here so it's pretty much impossible for me to shoot videos at the moment um that's another thing actually um that i will briefly cover uh, while i'm thinking about it um, because of the weather lately, obviously it has been raining so, so much, I am struggling to get a chance to make videos, so I think my upload schedule is going to be a bit higgledy-piggledy for a while um, until I, you know, can adapt to this new winter routine that I'm in now, and probably only going to be one video a week for a while, um, and probably quite a few short videos, just because I can film them on my phone, um, and... My phone doesn't mind getting wet, it's just got a pretty cruddy camera on it. Um, but the camera that I'm using now, with the microphone on it that actually is able to filter out a lot of that horrible motorway background noise that you probably would have heard in some of my earlier videos. Um, yeah, I can't use this camera when it's raining, it hates getting wet. I remember once when I first got it, I got it a tiny bit damp, like I was walking up from a field with it and it kind of rained a bit like it just got damp on the case like literally just a sprinkling of water and that was enough to fry my memory card so this camera don't like water so filming in the rain is pretty much a no-no uh i do have my little gopro rip off gopro thing that i use that has a waterproof case but again you've got the issue of serious lack of sound quality because obviously it doesn't have a decent microphone to filter out that horrible background noise that i've got here and also with it being in its little plastic case the sound quality is then worse again so real life problems vlogger problems right um but yeah back to mr here hello Hello. you're right scabby boy yeah he's got face scabs and all sorts of stuff going on at the moment as well i might do a separate video about um his current care routine because it is becoming rather extensive again and now there's a plane going over or a helicopter or something just to make even more background noise woohoo uh oh my goodness i think i'm gonna have to pause for a second and um i'll be back in a sec once that's gone because that's really loud okay noisy inconsiderate helicopter is now gone that was so loud like it wasn't even flying that low i guess it must just be the direction the wind is going in or something but that was ridiculously loud and I changed my battery because I noticed my little red light was just starting to blip, so I guess it kind of did me a favour. Um, but yeah, we've changed his foot care um, routine now. We are using some different stuff on his feet. Now, I never know how to pronounce this. I would call it Stockholm tar, but then I have a habit of pronouncing every single letter in a word because I say things how I see them. Um, because I'm just kind of simple and dumb like that, I guess. Uh, yeah, it does have an L in it. I was panicking then thinking I, I was saying it had an L in it when it didn't, um, but it's that. Oh, can I actually get it in the shot? That stuff. And it is disgusting. It is like really stinky, disgusting, um, treacle kind of stuff. I've got it on my hand now. I mean, it's disgusting, but at the same time, it's oddly nice. Um, I'm going to smell of that for days now. Now I've got that on me. Um, yeah, so we have switched from our other hoof greases that we've been using, and we've been using that on him. Um, and it was traditionally used for 
hoof health maintenance um, used for like thrush, fungal issues, general problems with foot health um, and it is amazing like anybody who's having problems with horses feet crumbling or flaking or fungal issues or peeling of the hoof wall anything like that that you're struggling to get on top of with whatever other methods you're using I would seriously recommend trying this stuff when I started out using it I was putting it on I put it on every day for about a week to start with just on the bottom of his foot and I really made sure that I slathered it in that hollow area that I was talking to you about around where his white line is um, and I've since progressed on to using it just twice a week um, and I can't believe the difference in his hoof health. So what I've actually done this week is I've started applying it to the hoof wall as well as the sole of his foot and I'm only doing that twice a week now because reckons that once or twice a week is plenty um now the reason i did it every day to start with is because his feet were just like rapidly deteriorating again but now i'm i'm genuinely impressed like anybody who's having problem with bad feet and horses check that stuff out uh because it has completely changed him now when we have a drier day like it's actually stopped raining for a split second now like it's been spitting the whole time i've been doing this this is why i'm stood under the canopy by his stable um when we actually get a dry day and i'm here and i have the time to actually make a video about it i'm gonna show you the bottom of his feet properly um now if i had any sense i would have done a proper before and after about this um but i keep forgetting to do these things like because I'm just useless basically. <laughs> I am useless at remembering to do the before part for the before and after videos but I can show you where the improvements are and I can show you I mean there's still a little bit of hollowing around his hoof wall area um, and there's still a few issues with a few peeling bits which actually I do need to rasp off when we get a dry day. I don't like doing it on a wet day because it's just that much harder. I completely understand now why farriers get annoyed with people who have horses with muddy wet feet because it is seriously seriously hard to do anything with wet soggy hoof it just doesn't doesn't go well so i have gained a lot of respect for farriers since i have been rasping his feet um so yeah i'm going to put together a whole video on that um showing how we're managing his feet in depth now and going through the stuff we're using and all the other things we've tried in the past and everything like that but in the meantime that is enough Jibber jabber, baloo! Blueberry! Hey! Baloo! Are you that embarrassed about your purple face? It really doesn't look that bad. So he had an outbreak of some horrendous skin problem on his face, and in the end, like I was using. Um, I tried Sudocrem on it first because it, I thought it just looked like something that he'd rubbed and it had gotten a little bit infected. So I put Sudocrem on it, came down the next day and it was twice the size. So I thought, okay, it's it's blue, it's probably something fungusy. So I went ahead and put some Caniston cream on it, which yes, Caniston cream is fantastic for fungal patches on horses. Only small fungal patches though, because obviously you only get it in tiny little, uh, tiny little tubes. I mean, maybe you can get it in bigger tubes, but it's really, really good for using on like fungusy patches on their faces um, because it is a very like sensitive antifungal cream it's really really good uh, so yeah Sudocrem the first day and the next morning it was twice the size and really angry looking then I put Caniston cream on it and I came down the next day and it was twice the size again and even angrier looking so in the end I went ahead and put some purple spray on it and I've done that twice now and it's finally drying up and starting to look like it is receding now um i don't think he's in the mood to let you have a proper look at it but Baloo. can we have a look at your face darling come here no he doesn't want to and i can't be bothered to put his head collar on and get him out because it's wet and horrible so that's fine you'll just have to take my word for it but yeah he had this great big like it was probably about that big oh my hands are so dirty like talk about workers hands right look at that hard skin people that is awful like i do not have feminine hands at all oh yeah so face hole is healing
feet are definitely moving in the right direction and at a much better speed than they ever have in the past. I will put together a video in the very near future um, covering all of that properly. And yeah, enjoy this little bit of footage of Bluey's first ever barefoot hack that we went on yesterday. <laughs>